I'm so excited to get to share as a part of this message series today, and it's, it's called Foundations. Have you enjoyed the Foundations series? Man, I just feel like, I feel like this series is so powerful because it's, it's not just for one group of people. It's for everyone. You know, when we talk about habits of a healthy home, this, this doesn't mean an actual structural home. This means a culture that we're building. And I hope this morning that, you know, over the past couple weeks, you know, we've been talking about leading with love and building a culture of kindness and fighting for each other. Well, all I want to do this morning is just kind of lay in another puzzle piece, uh, and that is the foundation of trust. You see, there's never going to be a season of your life where trust isn't a key ingredient. There's never going to be a place in your life where trust isn't a main thing. But how many of you know in the room when you talk about trust, you also have to talk about trust issues, right? Like, I don't know about you, but man, there's a season of life where I had a lot of trust issues. And this morning, all I want to do is is try and change your perspective a little bit. Because when we talk about trust issues, every single person in this room has them. You may have big ones, you may have small ones, but every single one of us in this space this morning has trust issues in some area, whether it's marriage, whether it's a relationship, maybe it's a job situation, maybe it's even with God. We all have trust issues. I I wanna prove it to you just on a practical level because We even have these ingrained and embedded little trust issues in just normal everyday life. So think about it this way. When you go to Taco Bell or you go to McDonald's, you go to Burger King, you know, you go through the drive-through line, you get to the window, they hand you your bag and immediately you're gonna do something. You're gonna check the bag. You're gonna check to make sure everything's there. You're gonna make sure everything's right. But when you go to Chick-fil-A, come on, Holy Spirit, come on. I mean, look, can I just talk about Chick-fil-A? Forget trust. Um, No, I'm just kidding. But you, you know, you go through the line, they pray for your family, you get to the, you get to the window, and then they give you your food, but something's different. You drive off. You just know they probably gave you more than you even deserve, right? Like, you just... You drive off and why is that? It's because some have caused you to have trust issues and one has proven trust, right? So we do this in life. We, we have situations where maybe it's relationships for you where we have trust issues because we've had different things happen in life that have created this foundation where we go, you know what? I can trust in all of these areas, but in this area, I have some trust issues. And this morning, what I want to do is try and give you a new perspective, because honestly, a lot of times, it's not even that we, we look at trust and you know, we, we just think it's really simple, but a lot of times, it just comes down to our perspective of trust. And what I want to do is lay out some really, really simple things that I think will help you. And our story this morning is found in Matthew chapter 14. We see the disciples, and the disciples are literally just a group of people that are closest to Jesus. They were called out by name by Jesus. So they're his closest followers. Jesus says, disciples, I need you to get in the boat, and I need you to cross to the other side of this lake. And this is where we pick up in Matthew 14, verse 24. It says, meanwhile, the disciples were in trouble far away from land, for a strong wind had risen, and they were fighting heavy waves. About three o'clock in the morning, Jesus came toward them, walking on the water. This is immediately, the story gets crazy, right? Walking on the water. When the disciples saw him walking on the water, they were terrified. In fear, they cried out, it's a ghost. But Jesus spoke to them at once and said, don't be afraid. Take courage, I am here. Then Peter called to him, Lord, if it's really you, tell me to come to you, walking on the water. Yes, come, Jesus said. So Peter went over the side of the boat and walked on the water towards Jesus. But when he saw the strong wind and the waves, he was terrified and began to sink. We all want that kind of faith, right? 
Like we all want to have the ability to have that kind of trust. This, this story is not crazy because Jesus walked on water. It's crazy because a normal human being like you and me walked on water. Like somebody, like Peter, if you don't, if you don't know this, he's kind of like the quirky one of the bunch, right? Like he's, he's the one, I guarantee when all the other disciples are, are kind of panicking and Jesus says, uh, and Peter says, hey, Jesus, call me out of the water. I'm sure all the other disciples were like, of course, Peter's going to walk on the water. <laughs> because he was, just, he was just that guy. But what we see happen in this moment is we see Peter begin a progression of trust. And something I want you to see that's really, really important here is that the perspective of trust that we see laid out in this story is the same perspective of trust we are called to have in our everyday lives. And it starts with this. The first thing is this, is trust is a calling. Trust is a calling. You see, when you see something as a calling from God, you will treat it differently. When you see something as a calling from God, you'll automatically respond a little differently depending on your connection with him. You see, we have to understand this morning that it's, it's not about building a foundation of trust just because it's the right thing. It's because what we're called to do. You see, this is for any relationship. This is for any situation. This is even for our church body as a whole. It's not just the right thing to do. It's what we're called to do. You see, we have to build a foundation of trust because it's a calling. In our story, Jesus told the disciples that they needed to get in the boat and cross to the other side. This seems like a part that we miss out on so often. You know, preachers will read this story and we'll just kind of skip over this part, but what we don't see is this is the first step in calling. You see, it always starts with one step because the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. So this is, this is the first step. It's calling. It's saying, you know what? I don't know where we're going. I know Jesus told us to go to the other side, but I'm gonna get in the boat Trust is a calling we must live in. You see, the disciples stepped in the boat and began the journey of trust because they had connection with Jesus. Connection with Jesus is where your calling is found. It's where all the things that, that you want to know about yourself, that's where it's found. You see, I don't know if you've ever had a situation where you've kind of lost the connection, where you know, the connection was kind of clouded. I, I didn't realize how important trust was until I lost it. I had a situation when I was a kid. Growing up, I was really, really bad uh, at lying. Like, um, I, I just, I didn't understand why lying was wrong. Like, I'm just going to be completely honest with you. Like, I would come up with these elaborate stories in my head, and I would just tell people, and I wouldn't think anything of it. And so, I called uh, the people that know me the best. I called my parents and I said, hey, I want you to tell me a story of a lie that I might have told that kind of affected your ability to trust me. And they began telling me this story. And let me just preface this. I do not remember this story, okay? You know, it's BC, right? So I was in third grade. I was in third grade. And I got in trouble at school because I wore this sign that said 25 cents a kiss. And uh, I made $7. Anyways. Um, <clears throat> but, <laughs> but I wore this sign and I got in trouble. And the teacher is telling me, she's like, we're going to have to have this parent-teacher conference. And I immediately just start being Ryan. And I say, well, that's fine. But my dad can't be there. He's a professional football player. I lived in Birmingham, Alabama. There is no professional team anywhere close. And then she says, well, okay. Then we'll invite your mom. And I'm like, okay, that's fine, but my mom doesn't speak English. <laughs> and I cannot make this up. My mom was dying laughing on the phone. She says, and I showed up to the meeting and the teacher had an interpreter <laughs> sitting next to her in the meeting. I'm literally, I, I am proving to you the importance of kids' ministry right now, all right? You know, Shelly's going to have a ton of people want to serve after that story. But what happened, 
what happened was my parents quickly realized they couldn't trust me as much as they thought. And because trust isn't just something we're kind of nonchalant about, I realized that I had to begin a journey of rebuilding trust. You see, a lot of times what we do in, in our walk is we kind of say, you know what, I understand that trust is a calling. Like, I'm okay with that, but I don't know if rebuilding trust is a calling because it's a difficult thing to do, right? It's a difficult thing to do to trust a situation that's hurt you. It's a difficult thing to do to trust somebody that's let you down. It's a difficult thing to do to step into that again, but I loved my parents. I wanted to keep that connection, so I had to begin to realize trust is a calling even when it comes to rebuilding trust. You see, you have a calling on your life today, and it's to build a foundation of trust. The second thing is this, is trust is a key. Trust is a key. What's the point of a key? It's to unlock something. You see, what trust does is it unlocks a world that you can't even see right now. It unlocks a world that you can't even see. Think about the story. The disciples are in the boat, and they are in the middle of a strong wind, and they see Jesus walking on the water towards them, and it says they immediately think it's a ghost, which means what? The trust issues are rising up, right? Side note for anybody that needs it. Trust issues will cause you to think that something you know is real is a lie. This is what's happening. These, these disciples knew Jesus. They were close to Jesus, but when the trust issues came up, what did they think? They thought he was a ghost. This is what trust issues will do to you. But we see then Peter says, Jesus, Jesus, if it's really you, tell me to come to you. If it's really you, call me out on the water. What, what was happening is Peter was taking the next step in his progression of building trust. You See, it started with getting in the boat, but it progressed into, you know what? I know, Jesus, I know you have possibilities. Jesus, you know what? If you can walk on the water towards me, why can't I walk on the water towards you? Call me out. If it's really you, I'll come. What we see here is we see that Peter goes from calling to a commitment. I'm committing. You see, I'm going to step even though I don't really know what's happening. It will take a commitment for you to build trust. Because this is not something you can half-heartedly do. It takes time. It takes effort. It takes you having the correct expectations. You know, something uh, just recently happened in my life is I just got married about a month ago. And uh, come on. And so we're like experts at it now. Um, and I'm just joking. Uh, but something we were taught in marriage counseling is the role of expectation. So if Hannah says, hey, Rye, I really need you to do this, and then I'm like, okay, babe, of course, I'll do it, you know, because I'm sweet. And, and then I don't do it, what happens is, is it creates what? Trust issues. It creates a space where she doesn't know if I will actually do what I say I'm gonna do. It messes with the expectation. This happens the same way when it comes to trust. It happens the same way in whatever situation you might have. So if you expect to get hurt, you'll always find the hurt. Like if you, if you expect to always be let down, you'll find a way to always be let down. But here, here's the truth for you. I think us as humans, we think so little about God, but what if we began to see trust as a key that unlocks a world of possibilities that God has for us? I mean, it's gonna unlock a world of possibilities that God has for us. I had the hardest time with this growing up because I would have preachers and I would have people from platforms go, you need to trust Jesus. And I didn't know what that meant. I thought that meant that I had to know everything about Jesus and then step. But I realized over time that 
It's about making progress. You see, this is what Peter's doing in this moment. It starts with getting in the boat. Okay, now he's called me to do something specific. Now I'm going to see what this trust is really capable of. I'm going to unlock the door. I'm going to see if I can walk on water. You see how it progresses? And then we see this incredible moment. And it defines Peter for the rest of his life. Peter walks on the water. How does he do that? It's because of our third thing, and that is trust is a bridge. Trust is a bridge. The the crazy part of this story is that Peter stepped out onto something that was sure to sink him. And because of his trust in Jesus, he had the ability to walk on water as if Jesus created a bridge for him. Is this not... Is this not mind-blowing to you? That God can create a bridge that will take you from one space of unbelief to being completely blown away by what God can do. You see, this is huge that we understand this because trust is a bridge in every area of your life. It's going to be a bridge in your marriage. It's going to be a bridge in your relationships. It's going to be a bridge in your workplace. It's going to be a bridge at the bridge, right? Like, it's going to be a bridge in everything that you do. And it's because trust takes courage. It takes courage to step out on the water. A lot of times we focus on the fact that he sank. I want to focus on the fact that he even stepped out of the boat. The fact that he even had the guts to say, you know what, I, I don't know everything, but I know if that's really Jesus, I can walk on this water like it's a bridge. You see, you have to pay really close attention to what Peter's really doing here. You see, he he doesn't know. He he just knows there's a storm going on, and he knows Jesus is in front of him. And what Peter is demonstrating here is that he can trust Jesus' heart even when he doesn't see what his hands are doing. So I I know that guy. I know my God. I know if that's really Jesus, then I can trust his heart. And I can walk on water. See, some of us need to be reminded that you can trust his heart even when you don't see what he's doing. Even when you feel caught in the middle of a storm. A couple months ago, I was, uh, I just arrived at the airport for my final flight uh, where I was going to leave my wife. So this was, uh, if you don't know anything about my story, I Uh, lived separately about nine months from uh, the girl that is now my wife. And she lived in Birmingham, Alabama. And I lived here and served at the church. And so I've been flying back and forth all through the year. Literally feel like I've flown like 400 times this year. It's exaggerating, but it felt like a lot. And so this is the final flight, like the final flight where I'm going to have to leave her. The next flight is me going home to marry her. And so I get to the airport And there's one person in the security line. Like, God is good. Amen? Amen. Like, there's one person in the security line. And so I get through that. I get to Chick-fil-A because God is good all the time, right? And then I... (laughs) Some of y'all are going to be mad at me because it's not open, right? And then you get... And then I get to my gate. Somehow I get the front row with all the leg room and the window seat. Like, somebody... Oh, that'll preach. And so... And so I get this seat, and everything's, I'm telling you, everything is amazing. I'm like, this is incredible. And then we get up in the air, we're riding for a little bit, and then I hear the pilot come over the intercom, and he says, passengers, we're about to go through a storm cloud. Now, in all the times I have flown, I have never gone through a storm cloud. I start hyperventilating, panicking. Like, I'm just, I'm just being dead honest with you. Like, the guy next to me was probably like, what is this guy doing? Like, I was panicking because I didn't know what that meant. I had no clue what that meant. And then, if I'm honest, this pilot starts preaching. Because he said, we're about to go through a storm cloud, uh, but don't worry, the plane is strong. Just enjoy your view and watch it change as you come out the other side. And I... And I was sitting there just like, Holy Spirit, what? Right? 
I was like, that's for somebody. I was like, I might die, but that's a good word. <laughs> and so, and so we're, going, we're going through, and I remember just hearing what he said changed everything about me. It changed my perspective because when you hear the plane is strong, it'll change something. Some of you need to know if you're in the middle of a storm this morning, the plane is strong. Our God yeah. is strong. Yeah. And you might, you might feel this morning like the storm cloud and the storm is it's too big for you to handle. But God doesn't just want to change your problem. He wants to change your perspective about your problem. See, he wants to change your view as you come out the other side. If you go back to the beginning of the story, this is so important. Jesus' first step actually is the thing that carries them through it all. He just says, I need you to get in the boat and I need you to go to the other side. Yes, there was a storm to the middle, but what does this mean? There is another side. You see, there's an other side to your trust issues. There's an other side to the pain that you're feeling. There's an other side to that relationship that you feel like you can't control. There's another side to the trust issues that you have right now in your marriage. There is an other side. And if you have a connection with Jesus and you're in the boat, he's taking you to the other side. He just wants to change your perspective in the middle of it. See, he, he's going to call you to do things that you don't understand. He's going to call you to things that in the moment might make no sense, but you have to realize trust is a calling that will unlock possibilities that you don't even see possible right now and that he will call you to do things that are just as crazy as walking on water like it's a bridge. And what you'll look back and see is, and I'm so thankful that I trust him with the first step because now I'm on the other side. You see, there's some of you this morning that you're on step two, right? Like, you're unlocking the door. You're opening the door to the possibilities. You're saying, God, where do you want me? God, where do you want me to serve? God, what do you want me to do? There's some of you, if I'm honest, man, you're walking on the water. You're out there, man. You're, you're doing it, but then there's some of you that you're still wondering if you should get in the boat. Still wondering if you can trust Jesus enough to just get in the boat. Listen, you might be in the middle of your trust issues. You might be in the middle of a storm cloud that has clouded your mind and that has built a fence of doubt around you. But I'm here to tell you, our God is strong and you can trust him. All you have to do this morning is just take one step to get in the boat. You have to trust that as you follow him, he'll take you to the other side. If you're in the room this morning, and that's you, I want to ask everybody to bow their heads and close their eyes. And I just want to create a comfortable space for you this morning to process for yourself. This is not you processing for your, your family. This is not you processing for the person next to you. This is you and God having a moment where you connect about what's really going on in your heart. And if you're here this morning and you say, Pastor Rye, I, I really need to take that first step. I don't, I don't know all the answers. I don't understand everything, but I, I want to take that first step. I want to get in the boat. I want to help you do that. You can pray right where you are. You can say, God, I give you my life. I trust you with my past, my present, and even my future. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. Thank you for being good even when I fail. You can have it all. And then there are some of you this morning that you're in the boat but you're stuck in the middle of a storm cloud and you don't you don't know if there's another side because you can't see it right now I just want to encourage you and pray for you in this moment 
there is another side. I want to pray that God would change your perspective and show you what the other side looks like. Father God, I just thank you for every single person in this room. God, I thank you for their commitment to get in the boat. God, and now they're in the middle of a storm cloud. And God, I just pray that you would bring clarity. God, that you would bring peace that surpasses all understanding. God, that you would insert joy into a situation where it doesn't even make sense. God, I pray for the people in this room that are going through a storm cloud in their marriage. God, I pray that you would help them to see that there is another side. God, I pray for the people in this room that are going through that in their workplace. God, I pray that you would help them to see there is another side. God, whatever the situation might be, God, there is an other side. Help us to see it. God, we want to see the way you see pray this in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. Can we give it up for those who made a decision this morning? Hey guys, thank you so much for joining us today. And if our ministry has been a source of encouragement for you, let me encourage you to do two things. Number one, share it with a friend who needs hope. That would make a big difference in their life. Secondly, share it with us. We would love to hear your story. You can send us an email at amen at bridgechurchfl.com. And finally, if you'd like to partner with us financially as we bring hope both locally and around the world, you can do that directly through our website, bridgechurchfl.com forward slash give. And thank you for letting us be a part of your spiritual journey.